Hello boys and girls, welcome to the Holy Paladin Guide for patch 10.2 Guardians of the Dream. The glass and the spec got massively nerfed after last season and the buffs and the rework that we saw. In fact, it got so bad that I was sure there's gonna be some buffs and some changes and finally some of them came through. So let's see how the Holy Paladin is going to play out in this patch. Before we start, let's put the expectations straight. The Holy Paladin is a melee healer. If you consider that to be a minus, you should look elsewhere to heal and also you will be managing two resources, the mana and the holy power. That probably adds a little bit more complexity compared to some of the other healers, but once you master it, it's not so bad and you'll be going to be bringing a lot to the dungeon with utility, high survivability and some pretty powerful cooldowns. So now let's dive straight in. One of the main abilities that you'll be using all the time is called Holy Shock. You can cast it on a friendly target to heal them or you can cast it on an enemy to do damage. It also generates holy power that you're going to be spending with some of your other abilities and it synergizes with almost everything else in your toolkit so it's quite important. Just to give you one good example, once you holy shock something you leave glimmer of light on that target. The glimmer of light is 30 seconds long and once you cast holy shock again even if it's on a different target all the targets with Glimmer of Light will either get healed or damaged based on whether they're friendly or an enemy. This effect is increased the more Glimmers you have rolling and of course this also synergizes with many of the talents that we're going to be seeing next. Some of them give you a second charge to Holy Shock, chance to refund mana on cast, you can even refund the whole charge of a Holy Shock once you cast it and it also has increased critical strike chance, damage and healing. The talents regarding Glimmer of Light are as powerful, for example, they affect everybody in your party, all 5 members. The effect can be triggered not only by Holy Shock but just spending Holy Power in general and you also get damage reduction to all the targets that have Glimmer on Light currently on them. There's even more skills that synergize with the Glimmer of Lights and Holy Shocks but we'll talk about those when we get to the cooldown section. Now we already mentioned that Holy Shock generates Holy Power that you'll be using, but let's first look at the other skills that generate Holy Power and then we're going to look into the spenders that use that Holy Power. You have Crusader Strike, which is a single target spell that hits your enemy and generates 2 Holy Power. This is due to the Holy Infusion talent and it also heals you for a small amount due to the Crusader's Reprieve. Almost all of your other spells will generate 1 Holy Power so this is quite powerful compared to them. Next on the list is Judgment, compared to Crusader Strike this one is actually ranged so you can cast it from a distance. It generates only one holy power but it actually synergizes with a lot of other talents. Greater Judgment reduces the target's damage which means that you're basically healing your tank and this effect is increased by 100% if you cast Judgment during Infusion of Light which were the Holy Shock critical strikes. After you spend certain amount of holy power, Judgment actually activates your wings which is one of your big cooldowns that we're going to mention later. And it can also cast Consecration at the feet of your target which gives you increased damage and increased healing as we're going to see in just a few moments. The spell itself unfortunately has 12 second cooldown but you want to press that button as soon as it's up to trigger all of those effects. And last but not least we have Hammer of Wrath which is also a ranged single target attack which does significant amount of damage but it's only usable on enemies below 20% health or during your wings. It also generates one holy power. The 7 second cooldown might seem long but you actually combine this spell with the veneration talent in the current builds. This adds passive healing effect every time you press that button based on the damage that you do. And it also gives you additional options to use it even on targets with more health as long as you land a critical strike with some of your other spells. Alright so far so good those were the holy power generator skills but what about spending the holy power? Here you have options if you want to spend the holy power to heal you can cast word of glory which is a single target healing spell. Let's also mention Light of Dawn which is an AoE healing cone in front of you which also uses holy power but in fact you're not going to be using that much in M plus because you have different ways to do AoE healing and this one is just not effective enough in that environment. Instead you'd be sticking to the word of glory which can be empowered in two different ways. Of Dusk and Dawn is a talent that will empower your next holy spender which could be word of glory after you press enough buttons that generate holy power. After you do that it also gives you damage reduction and faster cooldown reduction. 
and then you have your consecration which is an area on the ground that damages the enemies who stand on top of it. It's a great way to do some passive damage but while standing on top your word of glory is also empowered and it does 20% more healing. As you can imagine you want to keep this down at all times because it buffs your healing but it also buffs your damage including your holy spender for damage which, which is called shield of the righteous. This is actually an important button because you don't want to stay at your max 5 holy power cap and potentially waste holy power once you press more holy power generation buttons. Instead you can spend that holy power to do AoE damage via Shield of the Righteous and then you would be getting free words of glory every 5 casts of Shield of the Righteous including some extra damage to the initial target via Shine of the Righteousness talent. And before we move on to the main rotation let's also mention the flash of light skill that you have, it's a short cast that does a small heal. But if you run a couple of talents you can actually make this spell quite powerful. Influorescence of the Sunwell makes it so that you can have 2 stacks of infusion of light. Generally you want to spend this with the judgement but judgement has quite a long cooldown. So while waiting for it you can do short casts from range to heal your targets which will be increased by the divine revelations talent. Making your flash of lights quite powerful and almost at no mana cost because of the influorescence talent as well. Keep in mind that with the most recent changes mana is not an issue for the holy paladin anymore. But up until last week mana was a huge problem with holy paladin so having these spells and reducing some mana with the spell healing that you do with flash of light was actually crucial. Right now you can probably get away without running those talents and not casting flash of light at all. And I'll mention the alternatives that you have in your talent builds later in the respective section. That gives us enough to know the main buttons that you'll be pressing all the time for your main rotation. Always keep consecration up and of course stay inside of the circle. Use holy shock pretty much on cooldown. If there is nobody to heal don't forget that you can also use it for damage and leave the glimmer of lights on enemy targets as well. Use both your judgment and hammer of wrath as soon as they're off of cooldown because not only they do damage but they also have healing components attached to them. And then especially during trash you can sneak in crusader strike to generate even more holy power. Once you are at 5 holy power at the worst spend it using either shield of the righteousness to do more damage or if there is somebody at low health you can spot heal them with word of glory. If spot healing is needed, you're at range, you don't have holy power or you have infusion of light procs, you can also revert down to your flash of light spell. All of this is great to do some damage and do the so called main tenant's healing but what happens when you need to have more throughput or hard hitting boss mechanics that you need to deal with. We'll be looking into the major cooldowns next. Let's start with something that's going to make your words of glory which is a single target healing spread to different targets. As a paladin you're going to be using something called beacon of light. This transfers healing to your main target to the beacon target. On top of that you have a talent node where you can choose between beacon of fate and beacon of virtue. Now beacon of fate and beacon of light work in the following way. You cast them at the start of the dungeon to your two targets and they will remain there until the target basically dies. So you have these beacons active throughout the whole dungeon and all the healing that you do is transferred to the beacon targets. The minus of course is that there's only two beacons in that situation. If you decide to use beacon of virtue you have to recast it every 15 seconds and for 8 seconds you have 4 beacon targets instead. The minus here of course is that first you're wasting mana every time you cast the beacon of virtue and then you have to spend a global cooldown every time you want to use it. With the most recent changes when mana is not an issue anymore you can basically use either of them in M plus and you'll be totally fine. And the idea behind those beacons is that you want to heal targets that do not have beacon on them so the healing is transferred to the beacons targets and you're basically healing everyone. A whole different video could be made only on the usage of the beacons of light but to keep things short here. If you're using Beacon of Fate you want to cast one of them to a ranged target and another one to a melee target different from yourself. And the reason for that is that you do more healing to targets that are close to you or to one of your beacons. I often keep the second beacon on a melee target different than the tank but if you know that the tank is taking damage you can also switch a beacon to him so he gets more healing. 
As you can see, this is quite powerful because all of your single target healing spells will now cleave to additional targets. Speaking of cleave, one of your major cooldowns is called Divine Toe. You can cast 5 Holy Shocks on 5 different targets and they could be friendly or hostile depending on your primary target. You'll be running a talent that reduces the cooldown of the spells so you can cast it every 45 seconds. And the Holy Shocks will not only deal damage or heal, but they will also put glimmers on the targets and generate holy power. That makes this cooldown very powerful, even with the potential to use it both for healing and damage. And then things become even better because all the glimmers of light that you put to Divine Toe can now be consumed using Daybreak. Using this is going to remove all the glimmers, but it's going to trigger them at increased effectiveness, it's going to restore mana to you, and then it's going to empower your next 3 Holy Shocks to cast 2 additional times. This spell, compared to Divine Toe, does not generate Holy Power, but the empowered Holy Shocks will generate extra Holy Power once you cast them. So this makes this cooldown quite powerful as well, and you're going to be casting it every 45 seconds since the 1 minute cooldown timer is reduced by the 4 piece tier set bonus that we're going to mention shortly. Next on the list, of course, is the Wings. Avenging Rat is your major cooldown that you cast every 2 minutes and once you go into this Wings form, you get increased healing, increased damage, increased critical strike, you can cast Hammer of Rat on any target, and as you can see the list goes on and on. This is extremely powerful cooldown and keep in mind that you can get Avenging Rad also from the Awakening talent that we mentioned earlier by just spending Holy Power and then casting Judgments. Not much else to say here, everything you do, you do much better during Avenging Rad. As a Paladin you have another trademark skill which is called Devotion Aura that reduces the damage taken by everybody in your party by 3% and as a Holy Paladin you can use Aura Mastery to empower that effect. It's a long 3 minute cooldown, but every 3 minutes you can reduce the damage that everybody in your party takes by 20% for 8 seconds. So this is another powerful cooldown that you can use to mitigate some very hard hitting boss mechanics. And if we consider that to be the list of your major cooldowns, let me mention few that are a bit shorter and consider lesser cooldowns, however they could be as powerful as the ones that we already mentioned. Blessing a sacrifice reduces the damage that your target takes and transfers a portion to yourself. You'll be running a talent that allows you to cast this every minute and after the effect is over the target is also going to take reduced damage for another 8 seconds. I cannot stress enough how important this cooldown is because it's very short and you're basically protecting somebody for 20 seconds total every 1 minute. You can save that and use it if you know that somebody's going to be taking a lot of damage for a certain mechanic or you can just cast it on your tank when the pool starts and not worry too much about healing them. In any case, the more you press that button, the easier your life's going to be. If you are running the Divine Favor talent, then every 30 seconds you can use it to cast Empowered Holy Light, which will have increased healing and reduced cast time. It will also cleave to additional nearby targets because of the Resplendent Light talent that you're running, and you can cast it from a distance because it's not a melee skill. Make sure you have a way to track this cooldown because it's quite powerful and basically you want to use it on cooldown once it's available. Let's mention another skill that you'll be taking just because you need that talent point to go down the tree, it's called Holy Prism, it was very powerful last year because of the tier set, but with the tier set gone, now it doesn't generate holy power, so it lost a little bit of value, but you can use it to target an enemy to do a little bit of damage and spread healing to nearby targets, or you can use it to heal a friendly target and spread a little bit of damage to nearby enemies. This one is also ranged so you can use it on the move, it has a very short 20 second cooldown and it shares a note with Light's Hammer, but let's put it here that this one scales better right now, so you'll be taking this instead of the other skill. And last but not least, let's mention some extremely powerful cooldowns that you cannot use the whole time, unfortunately, because they have quite long cooldowns. Divine Shield is your personal bubble which makes you completely immune to everything, so you can use that to completely ignore mechanics for as long as you have it available and Blessing of Protection is similar but you cast it to a friendly target or yourself and that mitigates all physical and heart from effects damage. On an even longer cooldown you can use Lay on Hands on a party member to basically heal them to full 
And keep in mind that all these 3 skills cost for Barons for 30 seconds, which means that you cannot cast them one after the other on the same target. I will also mention Blessing of Freedom here, because this is quite powerful this season, not only to remove the entangling affects, but you can also use it to deal with some of the boss mechanics in the dungeons, the Necro Forced in Galakron's Fall, the Roots around the second boss in Dark Heart Ticket, or the Little Lusher's debuff in Everbloom. And now at the end, let's summarize how you should be using and managing your cooldowns. First up, make sure you have your beacons up at all time, or use Beacon of Virtue aggressively if you pick this talent. Use Blessing of Sacrifice pretty much on cooldown because it's just too good not to use. The benefits from that and the value from that is huge. After that, you'll be alternating between Divine Toe and Daybreak. You always want to cast Divine Toe first in M+, then follow up by Daybreak, of course staggering a little bit. With the idea here is that you want to apply a lot of Glimmers with Divine Toe first and then consume them with Daybreak. If both are on cooldown or you need some extra help, you can pop your wings. However, do not hold on your wings for too long, as this is a very powerful cooldown that gives you not only healing but damage as well. And 2 minutes is not that long of a cooldown to make you hold for this forever and not use it. You should be using the short cooldowns of Holy Prism and Divine Favor basically as soon as they're up. You can even consider those to be part of your main rotation and not part of your cooldowns. And then, based on the situation, you have your big and long cooldowns that can save any situation, or a Mastery Divine Shield, Blessing of Protection, Lay on Hands. Yes, it's a lot of buttons, but if you use them correctly, you can get a lot of value out of them. Over here at the end, let's mention the 4-piece tier set bonus. I intentionally left this for the end, so I can introduce all the skills that are connected with it. And it also introduces a little bit of a strange gameplay styles because it promotes casting Holy Shock on the same target over and over again. If you already have Glimmer of Light on your Holy Shock target, it creates a hot or a dot on your friendly or enemy target that lasts for 8 seconds and stacks. That's the 2 piece bonus and the 4 set piece bonus, it's kinda disconnected with the 2 piece, it reduces the cooldown of Daybreak and once you use it, you get increased haste for 6 seconds. Overall my advice is enjoy the benefits from the 4 piece tier set bonus and kinda ignore the 2 set. You will get benefits from the Holy Reverberation dot even if you're not actively playing for it as there are many situations where you'll be casting Holy Shocks on targets that already have Glimmer of Light. Few quick examples, you might be spam healing somebody, you might be using Divine Toe and some of the targets that you're going to hit are already going to be having Glimmer of Lights on them. And then the empowered Holy Shocks from Daybreak will naturally hit the same target several times, triggering the Holy Reverberation dot and stacks. At the same time, if you intentionally try to trigger that HOD, you will be overhealing somebody by casting Holy Shocks on them over and over again, which is not necessarily something that you want in M+, unless you're using the Holy Shocks for damage, then feel free to spam them on enemies as much as you can. It is worth noting that this tier set, although it's a little bit strange, it does present you with a damage component if you decide to use it in such a way, which is great. And now, at the end, here is a talent build that basically includes everything that we've talked about so far. You can find this in the description of this video as well, and of course there are a few comments to make. First, as mentioned earlier, we're not running the third deliverance talent anymore. It's not a bad talent, but it just provides you with a sustained long healing and this is not something that you want to do in M+. Here you want to mitigate bursting damage, so taking skills like the Ephorescence and the Divine Favor can help you do exactly that, but if you like the talent you can still run it, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. There's also another talent note that I didn't mention, the Blessing of Summer is basically a must have for M+, and this is a button that changes every 45 seconds with the different variations providing damage, cooldown reduction, extra healing, etc. I actually have a separate video explaining how to play with this and which are the best targets to cast different blessings on. So check this out in the description of this video, but if you find this too complicated, you can just pick the other version which is called Merciful Auras. This is just a passive healing that you're going to be getting throughout the whole dungeon. There will be no button to press, so feel free to take this instead if you don't want to deal with the complications of the Blessing of Summer. And that's pretty much it. I did forget to mention that you have a personal defensive called Divine Protection, which is very short cooldown. Use that aggressively, especially with your Blessing of Sacrifice. And keep an eye on my channel where there's of course much more guides 
and extra videos explaining, as I mentioned, the blessing of summer usage, divine toe with daybreak usage, using the different paladin beacons and so forth. If you have any questions or feedback, let me know in the comments below. Have fun holy shocking in your keys and I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, bye bye and take care.